Welcome to the Jungets Games tutorial and playthrough for Terra Mara. In this video, I'll be showing you how to play the game while we're actually playing it, and if you'd like to watch the rest of the playthrough, you can do so by clicking the link down below in the description, or by clicking the eye up there in the top corner. Now before we move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes while we're playing, and that lets me put corrections directly on the screen that you should be able to see. Now let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the game of Terramara, and this is a worker placement style game where each person can send their workers out to farther and farther locations. Now the catch is that each round, you are only going to bring back the workers that are at the current row or above, and as you play through the game, you're going to unlock more rows. That means on the first turn of the game, you could send one of your workers to the very bottom of the board, but you will never get access to that worker again, so you have to decide how many turns you're okay with losing your workers to get the better benefits down there. Now, I'll explain how this works amongst all of the other things that are going on in this game in greater detail while we're playing it, but before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Support. There you'll find a bunch of ways you can help things out, and some of them have pretty cool perks like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. Alright, let's now jump into the game. Out here, the game is fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, I do want to mention that this is a prototype version of the game, so the art and components are not necessarily what you'll find in the final version. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly focus down on the playing areas, because it's worth noting that when you play Terra Mara, you can either start with a symmetric setup for the resources for each player, or you can have a draft for these starting resource cards and these character cards, which give special abilities to the different players. In this case, we have done that draft already, and these are the resource cards that we picked, and I'll explain how these character cards work in a little bit. Alright, let's now start the game, and today we will be playing as the yellow player over here. This card is the starting player card, and that means we get to take the first turn of the game, so let's go for it. Now the first thing we have to do on our turn is place one of our clan members out onto an action location. You can see at the start of the game we have four of these explorers and one chieftain, and I think for the first turn we're going to place an explorer. Now they can go down onto any one of the active uh, locations on the map, but it's worth noting the farther you go down on these rows, the longer it will be until you get access to this explorer again in the future. Now I'll explain how that works in greater detail soon, but for now let's start simply and put our explorer right over here. So let's focus in over here, and you'll notice this has a square lumber symbol. This means we will immediately take one of that resource from the supply, and then we can store it over here in our clan area. Now you'll notice at the start of the game we have all four of these gray resources on the left, and we had none on the right. Now the gray circular icon resources are raw resources, and over here on the right the square tan colored resources are refined. Now it is worth noting that there is no limit to the amount of resources we can hold, but the more we have it sitting over here, the more likely they are to be stolen from an opponent during a raid action. Now I'll explain how that one works soon, but for now I think we have finished out this action. This means we can now move into the last part of our turn, where we can optionally craft an artifact. Now for this, you have to look over here to this river track, and this is where we track our culture. At the start of the game, we are at the zero spot, and it looks like both of our opponents have gained one as part of the starting setup. Now whenever you craft an artifact, you can choose any that are below the canoe or over to the left. That means we have these two options over here, and currently both of our opponents have a third option because their canoes have gone over this threshold. So let's take a brief closer look at these cards, and there are four different types of artifacts in the game, and we can actually see all of those types here. This one is pottery, then we have weapons, then there is clothing, and finally tools. Now every artifact has a craft cost, and that is listed down the middle in refined resources. After that, we can see there are effects down at the bottom, and there are four different main types of icons. This lightning bolt is a ability that happens the moment you get that uh, artifact made. Over here, this symbol means end game points. Next up, this circle symbol with an arrow means this can be used once per round in the game. And lastly, this infinity symbol means that is an ongoing ability you have for the rest of the game. Now at this point, we only have access to these two artifacts, and you'll notice that all of them require three refined resources. Currently, we only have one refined resource, so that means we are unfortunately not going to be able to craft any of these artifacts on this turn. Now before we move on, I do want to mention that once we get our canoe up to this spot right here, that will unlock this reserve ability. This means instead of crafting an artifact from the row, we can reserve an artifact that is available to us, and then in the future, we can craft that reserved artifact instead of one of these from the row. 
that you can only hold one artifact at a time, and you cannot discard it, and you will lose 5 points at the end of the game if you don't craft it by the end of the game, so that's certainly something to keep in mind. Now obviously we have a little bit of time before that happens, so let's go ahead and move on. This means it's now the green player's turn, and they're going to place one of their explorers. So when they come up to the top of the board, this is going to be the location that they want to activate. Now you'll notice that this has two different options because there is a slash. This means they can gain one military and one culture, or they can gain two movement on the caravan track over here. Now this is the military track along the top, and the culture track we just talked about on the river, but in this case it looks like the green player wants to go with caravan movement. So let's focus on the caravan track going down the right hand side of the board. Now you'll notice that every player has two caravans, and with every one of these movements, they can move a caravan down a road segment. Now you'll notice that the green player and us as the yellow player already moved once as part of setup, and at this point the green player has decided they want to take this caravan, and they're going to move it down this road, bringing them to this crossroads location. Now, after they do that, they have one more move, and they've decided to move this caravan again. If they wanted to, they could split it up between these two, but what they're now going to do is take it and move it over here to the left. Now, you'll notice, going down the left-hand side of the board, there are these bonus tokens. As soon as you land on or pass through one of these spots, you immediately get that benefit. Now, this does mean they have to move from here over here to this crossroads later on, so it's slower at bringing your caravans down to the south, and there certainly are benefits to doing that quickly, but for now, it looks like the green player wants this benefit. Now, what this says is they can gain one culture, which means they can move their canoe down the river once. Now, at this point, they are not done, because it's now time to look at their character card that they chose at the beginning of the game. Now, this on the top has a lightning bolt, and that one culture is why they started on the first spot of the culture track. Down below, there is an infinity symbol, and this is an ongoing ability, and it says whenever the green player gains at least one culture, they gain a bonus culture for that action. So in this case, they actually get a second culture for that, and they have now unlocked the ability to craft any of these first four cards down here. Having these extra options is certainly nice, but you'll notice that all of them still require three of the refined resource, and the green player still only has two. That means that they are going to end their turn and not craft anything, so now the blue player can take their turn. This means the blue player has to place a clan member, but before they do that, I'd like to talk in a little more detail about these character cards in front of us. Now, we just talked about the green player's character right here, and let's now look at the blue player's. Now, there is no starting uh, resource benefit for this character, and what this says is, while this card is face up, they will not be able to lose military on the military track. Now, they can spend military to trade it into other things, but there are a couple different ways in this game that you might lose military, and I'll explain those soon. Now, it's worth noting, before you place your first clan member at the start of a round, you have the option of flipping your character card over. Now, that brings them to their older, experienced side, and the backside of all of the characters is more victory point focused. In this case, they can use this uh, card once per round to gain 2, 3, 4, or 5 victory points, depending on how far along that military track they are. Now, this is not what they're planning on doing at this point, but I figure let's now look at the other options in front of us. Obviously, we know the green player's character gets them extra culture, and when they decide to flip it over, it then says whenever they gain at least one culture on the track, they will get two points. So obviously, they want to go as far down the track, but they can then turn that culture into points directly. The last one of these cards is ours over here, and it says at the start of the game, we had one caravan movement, and that's why our token had moved over once on the track. Now down here it says for the rest of the game, while this is face up that is, we will gain an extra caravan move every time we do at least one. Now, if we make an experienced version of this card, we will then gain two points every time we reach one of those central crossroads spots. So I don't think we're planning on doing this anytime soon, and obviously, you can only flip this over before you place a member at the start of the round, so we don't even have an option of flipping this over until the start of the next round of the game. So let's come back to the blue player, and they are going to place an explorer, and they've decided to go right over here. On this spot, they gain two of the raw or resource, and then they gain one military. That means they can push themselves up this track once, and they have now tied us on that track. And they are now done with their turn because they cannot afford any of the artifacts. This means it's once again our turn, and I think what we want to do is get this artifact crafted. Now that requires one lumber, which we already have, and it requires two leather. We currently have two of the livestock, so we have to refine that over here. Now I think the way we're going to do that is by claiming a worker. And the way we do that is by placing a clan member over onto this action spot. 
Now you can see this symbol is for the worker, and whenever you go onto this spot, you immediately take the worker that is associated with the current round of the game. You'll notice this marker is right now on the one spot, and we are going to be playing through five rounds of the game. So currently, that means we can take a value one worker from the stack. Next up, we can add this into our clan area, and you'll notice that we actually started the game with a level one worker. That's because this was our starting resource card. This gave us two raw resources of our choice. It's also the reason we started at three strength, and then you can see the level one worker as a starting bonus. Now on your turn, you have the option of using any of your workers in order to upgrade raw resources into refined resources. Now you can only do this once per round, which means they will become refreshed at the start of the next round. As I said before, we want two leather in order to craft this artifact, and we now have two of these workers. Now whenever you use them, they can turn a number of raw resources into refined resources up to the value on it. So these are level 1 workers, which means when we use them, they can just convert one raw resource. So this one will flip over that livestock into leather, and then we can use the other worker to turn this livestock into the second piece of leather that we needed. Alright, our placement is now done, so now we have the option of crafting an artifact, and we can see that our canoe is in this area, which means we can now get this one made. As I said before, that is going to cost two leather and one of the refined lumber, and now we can add this into our playing area. Well, I figure let's explain how this works in a little more detail. Now, the first thing to point out is the fact that this card just gave us one victory point at the end of the game, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner, so obviously getting points is good. Now, down here we have an effect, and this circular symbol actually matches that of our workers. This means we can use this once per round, and then do the ability listed down below. In this case, we can spend up to three of our raw or refined resources, and we get one caravan movement for each. Obviously, we are incentivized to get caravan movement, considering we get a bonus one every time we get at least one caravan move, but it is worth noting that we only get one bonus move for this card for the entire activation of up to three resources. Well, with our turn done, we now have to refresh the artifact row. That means we can slide all of these over to the left, and we can now reveal a new one from the top of the deck. Alright, it's now the green player's turn, and what they want to do is activate this location that we already put an explorer down onto. Now, there are ways to do that, and I think it's now time to talk a little bit more about the restrictions and options for the explorers, as well as the chieftain that we haven't talked about just yet. Now, whenever a player wants to activate a location that has an opposing explorer on it, they can only do this if they have a higher military value than the explorer that's already in that zone. As you can see, the green player currently has a military value of 4, and we have a military of 3. That means this is legal for the green player. After that, they can then activate the area, but as a penalty for this small conflict, the green player will now lose one of their military, which means that they would then tie for us, which would potentially restrict them in the future. Now, if they wanted to, instead, they could send their chieftain over to this location. The chieftain never cares about the overall military strength of your opponents, so in this case, they could do this even if they were the lowest on the military track, and they don't have to lose any of their military to do this. Now that does seem like a good option for the green player, but let's talk a little bit more about this chieftain pawn. Now it is obviously quite powerful, allowing them to go onto spots with more powerful opponents, but another thing about the chieftain is if you put them down onto a location first, then no other tokens can go into that zone. So this is a good way to essentially stop your opponents from doing a powerful ability. Now there is a restriction for this chieftain pawn, and that is that you cannot send it out into the future. Now what I mean is, if you'll notice, this row is currently right next to this current round. Now this row right here is associated with round 2, and for now that is effectively the future. So that means we cannot send the Chieftain over onto those locations. Now you can send your Explorers to these locations, but you will not get them back until the end of the associated round. So if the green player did this, that would certainly be a powerful action, but they would not have access to this Explorer for the entire second round of the game. Now, at this point, I also have to mention that you can never have two of the same color pawn in the same zone at any point. So the green player has decided to use their chieftain over here. That means they do not have to lose any military as a penalty. And then they're going to take the other worker from the supply for this current round. So they can add that worker into their area, and they are going to immediately use it to turn this raw livestock into leather. Now that their placement is done, they have the option of crafting an artifact, and they have all of these options available because their canoe is way up here. Now they've decided they want to craft this one. 
it is going to be worth three points to them at the end of the game. That is going to cost two of this ashlar, which is the refined stone, and one of the leather. And now for the rest of the game, whenever they craft one of the clothing type of artifact, they pay one less leather to do so. They can now finish their turn by refreshing this artifact row. So it's now the blue player's turn, and they have decided to use one of their explorers, and they're going to send it over to their hut. Now this is an option that you can do instead of sending your members out to the main board, and this is a special spot that can take any number of your own clan members. Now whenever you place one of your clan members down onto this spot, you can do either the top or the bottom action listed. In this case, we can see this one says you can turn a raw resource into its respective refined resource, or you can turn a raw resource into a different raw resource. Each one of these can be done only once on a turn, and it looks like the blue player wants to turn this ore into a metal bar, and then as a worker action, uh, which they picked up as part of their setup, they can now upgrade this raw ore into a metal bar. With their placement done, they now have the option of crafting an artifact, and you'll notice this one over here requires three metal bars. Well, they do indeed have that, and they have decided to discard those to the supply in order to craft this. The first thing to note about this card is it is worth two points at the end of the game, and then as a lightning bolt immediate action, they will gain two military. Now, they are the blue player, so that means they're going to go all the way up here, and they are now the strongest. Now remember, they currently have this young character in front of them, and that says they do not lose strength whenever they send one of their clan members onto a spot with an opposing explorer on it. So getting up to the top is important for them because that is going to open up the options that they have. Now the other thing that this card says is at the end of the game, they are going to get three points if their military is at this shield level or six points if it's at this one. Now those shield icons show up at the start of the different tiers out here on the board, so that effectively means if they get to the halfway point, they get three points, and if they make it all the way to the three-quarter spot on this track, they will get six. Now this is particularly good for the blue player, considering they are going to be losing less military than the rest of us, at least as long as this card is flipped to this side. Once they flip it to the other side, they can try to get points for being really high up this track, but they can at that point start losing their military again. Blue is now done, so that means we can shift all of these artifacts over and reveal a new one. All right, it's now our turn, and let's send out one of our explorers. And the place that we want to go to is right over here. Now, currently, there is already one explorer here, and that is from the neutral red player. Now, there are six of these uh, neutral explorers out on the map, and there is a neutral player military marker. This means in order to go over here, we have to have more military than the neutral player, and currently we do indeed have that. Now, unfortunately, that does mean we have to lose one military in order to do this, but I decided to do this instead of using our chieftain because we might want to use this later on in the round to copy a location that the green or blue player is at, and remember that you can place the chieftain down into a spot with stronger opponents. Now, obviously, this is going to make the disparity between our militaries even greater, but I think this is still a good action. Now, this is going to get us two livestock raw resources, so we can add those into our area, and then we're going to gain one caravan movement. Now, remember, we have a character card that says whenever we get at least one movement, we gain a bonus one, so that means we can get two movement up on the caravan track. In this case, I think let's start by taking this caravan here, and we'll go the slow way heading over to this bonus. Now, that bonus is going to give us another raw livestock resource, as well as a raw ore resource. These will also get added into our area, so this is a really good turn for resources, and then we have one more movement from our bonus, and with that we can take one of these caravans and send it down to this crossroad. That is going to finish out our turn because we certainly don't have the resources required to craft an artifact. This means the green player can go, and they've decided to send their explorer up to this spot. Now you'll notice both of these locations have this special icon in it, and this means under no circumstances can there be two clan members in each of these. Now this location right here means the green player is going to take the starting player card. That means they will be the starting player for the next round, and immediately when they do this, they are going to gain one caravan movement as a bonus. Now after that, everyone else will potentially get bonuses. The next player in clockwise order is going to be the blue player, and they don't get anything. And that means we will be the third player in the next round, and as a bonus for that, we actually get a culture, even though it's the green player's turn. Going third certainly isn't good, but I do like getting a free culture. And then green can take their caravan movement, and they're going to take this one right here and go onto this spot. 
That means they get a livestock as well as ore raw resource. And that's going to finish out their turn because they cannot afford any artifacts. The blue player is next and they're going to place their chieftain. And it looks like they are going to simply put it right over onto the spot. Now this is not a powerful location. That's simply going to get them one of the raw rock resource. But remember, whenever a chieftain goes down by itself, then no opponents can go onto the spot at all. Now they don't have to worry about reserving their chieftain to go onto a spot with one of the stronger uh, enemies because currently they are the strongest. And remember, whenever they use their explorers to go onto a spot with an opponent, they will not lose any strength because of their character card. So that's going to finish their turn. And this means we now get to go, and I think let's use an explorer. And with it, we can head right over here, which is the second to last of the open spots in the current locations. Now remember, we could send this right over here if we wanted to. That does not seem too bad, considering we currently have three livestock, and that would let us turn two of them into leather. The problem is we would then not get access to this explorer in the next round, and I do think we should prioritize those explorers. So for now, let's not go out exploring with them. Let's send them right over here. Now there is this one empty spot over here with a raid action, and I'll explain how that one works soon. Suffice it to say, this is not a good option for us right now. So this action right here is simply going to give us one of the wood raw resource. As you can see, we're becoming pretty flush with the raw resources over here, but unfortunately we have no refined, so we cannot craft anything, and that means the green player can go. And it looks like they want to activate their hut with one of their explorers. Now the option they're going to choose is down here. That lets them turn any one of their raw resources into one of a different type, so this ore is going to turn into livestock, and that's going to finish their turn. So blue is next. And they've decided they want to come over here to the spot where the green explorer is. They can do that because they have a greater military value than green. And remember, they are not going to lose a military as a penalty because of their character card. So they can get two caravan movement or they can gain a military as well as a culture. And that is going to be what they want to do. So their military is going to go up and just like that, they are now in the second tier. Now after that, they can gain one culture, which will bring them to this spot on the river. Well, it's time for our last action of the round, and we have to use our chieftain. And if you remember from before, we cannot go onto a spot where we already have one of our clan members, and we can also not go to a spot with another chieftain. So if we look out here for the options, uh, both of these are already full because there can be a maximum of two figures on them. Uh, looks like over here, this is an option, and this is also an option. Now, once again, I'll explain the rating soon, and it is worth noting that we cannot place down onto these zones with these fire tokens. I haven't explained that so far, but I think that was pretty obvious. These were put out as part of setup for the three-player game, and they permanently stay on those spots for this entire game, but they went out randomly. Now, I think what we should do is actually head right over here. This is a pretty good spot, and our military is not doing very well. Now, we could go here again because our chieftain uh, does not care if the other uh, opponent right over here is stronger. That means we are going to get two of the raw or resource, and our military will go up by one. So let's add these into our area, and we have a lot of raw resources, and since this is the final action of the round for us, I think we should definitely use this artifact. It can be used once per round, and now we can spend up to three of the raw or refined resources, and we will gain the caravan movements for each. Now in this case, I think let's just spend both of these we just got, as well as this one livestock, to keep ourselves nice and symmetrical, and that means we get three caravan bumps, plus one for our character bonus. This means we get four movement overall, and we can start with this caravan back here. So we can go up to this crossroads for one, and then we can head over here for our second move. That is going to get us a culture, and I think for our third move, we'll bring this caravan over to the same spot. So that means we have just gained two culture, which is actually going to unlock another artifact option for us at the end of our turn. Now, I haven't mentioned it just yet, but as we make it down this river, there are more benefits. Once you get over here, you can immediately take this bonus, which is one refined good. And if we get all the way over here, we can unlock another explorer to use for the rest of the game. At this point, we have used three out of our four movement, so we can now move this one over here to finish off that action. So our final turn of the round is done because we definitely cannot afford an artifact. So now the green player can go and they've decided to send them out into the wilderness. Now, they're not going to go too far, and the explorer's going to head right over here. 
Now, this action spot is on the second round row. And remember, they will not get access to this explorer again until the end of the second round. So it's kind of like they just placed into the second round in this first round. They did not see a better option for themselves, and they really like the idea of executing this right now. So right below, this says they can turn two of their livestock raw resource into two leather. It does appear they were setting this up, considering last turn they just made this livestock. So both of these can be flipped over. And now they can end their turn by crafting this artifact right here. We can see their canoe is over that area, and this normally costs three leather. But remember, they have this pottery card down here. Now that gives them a one leather discount, specifically when they are crafting the clothing type of artifacts. So that means they can spend both of this leather right over here, and now we can see this will get them two points at the end of the game, and immediately they get two caravan bumps and two culture movement down the river. Two bumps for green will get them over here, and remember that their character is active, so that's going to give them another bump. So as soon as they go right here, they can actually get a refined resource of their choice, and they are just two culture away from getting another explorer. In this case, they are going to take the refined Ashlar, and then they get two more movement on the caravan track, and we're not surprised to see them go one, two, and this is going to give them another culture. Just like before, whenever they get at least one culture, they get an extra one. So they have actually gotten all the way down here on the first round of the game, and that has unlocked this explorer for them. So their turn is now done, and that was quite effective for them, and we can now reveal another card. The blue player is now up, and they've decided to simply head right over here. Obviously, their military is greater than ours, so they can head onto the spot. They will not lose a military as a penalty due to their character, and this will simply give them one of the refined lumber resource. Now, before we move on, I would like to describe what happens with this raid action, because it appears none of the players are going to be selecting this in the first round of the game. Now, the way this works is you first have to lose one military, unless, of course, you are the blue player, and then you get to raid every one of your opponents. The way this works is you look to the section of the military track where your token is, and then you compare that to each one of your opponents. For instance, if the blue player decided this is what they were going to do on this turn, then they would look over here, and this says that for every opponent that is currently in the circle shield area, they will have to give the blue player one out of four of their resources. Now, this also means if one of their opponents was, say, up here in the large oval shield spot, then that means that opponent would have to give the blue player one out of six resources. So even if you have stronger opponents out here, you can still raid them, but you will take less resources depending on what that strength difference is. Now, the player itself who gets raided decides what resource they will give off, and that could be raw or refined. So if the blue player had done that, then it looks like we would have to give them one out of four of our resources, and we currently have six so that would have lost one of our resources but of course all of our resources are currently uh, raw and this gives the blue player a refined resource which is why they decided to do this instead of raiding all right the blue player is done so now we can see that the green player actually gets to go again because they unlocked another one of their explorers now they're going to take a simple turn and just activate their hut and with this they are going to refine this resource right here and at this point they are done with their turn and it looks like we are done with the round because all of the clan members have been placed this means it's now time for the end of a round cleanup, and the first thing we do is return all of the clan members, either on the current board or above it, to each of the players. That means all of these are going to go back, and so will any of the clan members currently on our huts. Next up, we can remove this neutral explorer, and now we can flip over the boards that are associated with the round that just finished. So this is going to head over like this, and then this spot over here will flip over, and you'll notice on these boards there is snow. So now there are different types of action spots on here. Over here we can see this is an outpost, and over here we have a crossroads action. Now the way these work in the future rounds is over here, you can now send your caravans on these roads to then plant flags into this outpost spot. Each player has four of these flat tokens, and at the end of the game, players will get points depending on the condition that shows up within that outpost as long as they have a flag there. When we focus in, this says you'll get two, five, or ten points at the end of the game if you have your military marker at the one, two, or three square spot along that military track. 
Now you can see what's coming up in the future. Underneath this board right here, it's going to give two, five, or 10 points if you have both of your caravans up to the single, double, or triple triangle spots that's listed out here on the caravan track. Down here, you can get two, five, or 10 points if you have two, three, or four of that specific type of artifact, so you can plan ahead for the different types of outpost scorings, and you have to make sure to not send your caravan too far down if you want to head over here in order to get these victory points. Now, you do always have to send your caravans down when they move, and that means there's no way for us to actually double back with one of our yellow caravans to put a flag over here in a future round. Now, that's fine. I don't really think we're going to be going too hard on that military track, but we are going to be going down far on this caravan track, so we have to make sure to not send one of our caravans past this spot in the next round. So potentially, we'll just send one of them really far down to get bonuses while we lag behind with another one to potentially plant some flags. Now, speaking of the caravans, we have a new option that's unlocked over here on the fourth side of this tile that flipped. Now, this is a caravan spot, and you can only send one of your clan members to this location if both of your caravans have met or passed over the crossroads spot that is matched up on this track. That means we have done that, and in fact, the green player has also done that. And as you can see, when you activate this spot, you then get the ability to get rid of two of the same type of the raw resource and turn that into three of the equivalent type of refined resource. So that is a very powerful action that's available to us and the green player, but not currently the blue player, because at this point they haven't actually moved their caravans at all. Well, I figure since I'm talking about new action spots available, let's also talk about one other type of action spot that we can go to later on in the game, and those are printed down here on the far right side of the board. These are special action locations, and you can only go over here in the fifth and final round of the game. Remember, you can send your explorers out to any of these spots as early as the first round if you want to, but of course you will not have access to that explorer as the game goes on. Now, each one of these special action spots have a really nice benefit, but they also have a restriction. For instance, this one right here can only be activated if you have five or more worker power in front of you, and then you'll get one military, one culture, one caravan move, and a refined resource of your choice. This one down here can only be used if you're up to the two square spot on the military track, and that is going to give you two refined resources, and it lets you uh, upgrade one raw into the refined version. Now there is one last thing to mention before we move on from this area, and that is this action here. Now we could have activated this action on the first round of the game if we wanted to, and what this does is you can then gain access to these two warriors that go into your area. Now it's worth noting that only one player can go onto this spot, and then these warriors act like chieftains when placed. So the player who takes them can then put them out onto the board, and they have an added benefit of not matching the color of that player, so you can actually double down on an action by placing a warrior onto the spot that matches one of your own clan members. So we've now covered this action, and the next thing we can do while resetting for the next round is refresh all of the things that we activated during the round. Lastly, we can move this round token over to the 2 spot, and we have now entered the second round of the game. Now there's a couple things we have to do at the start of a new round, and the first of these involves this deck right here. Now this has just four cards in it, they say one, two, three, and four, and you use this whenever you have neutral players in the game, so whenever you're playing a two or three player game. Now the way this works is we have to shuffle this one up, and then we can reveal one of these cards, and that is going to be the amount of military that that neutral character gets. So in this case it looks like we got a little bit lucky, the red neutral player will gain one military on the track which means they are now tied with the green player. After that, we can slide this down to remind ourselves to do this at the start of the third round, and the last thing we have to do is evaluate this icon. Now what this says is we have to discard all of the level 1 artifacts from the top of the deck. So we can just go through here, and it looks like all four of these will not see play, and that means once artifacts get purchased, these level 2 artifacts will enter the row. Now you'll notice once we get to the third row, we see this icon, and this says we are going to remove any of the level 1 artifacts that are still out on the row, and then we will refill. Once we get to the fourth round, that is going to be the spot where we remove any of the level 2 artifacts from the top of the deck, and lastly, once we get to the fifth round of the game, we will remove any level 2s from the row, so that means in the fifth round of the game, we will only see the level 3 artifacts down there in the market. Now there is one more set of icons over here for the start of the fifth and final round of the game, and this says you flip the starting player card over, so now in that fifth round, the person who takes this simply takes two uh, caravan movement, two military, or two culture, and nobody else gets any benefit.
Okay, we are now ready to start the second round of the game, but I think at this point it's time to talk about what we're going to get points for once the game is over. Remember, the game will be over at the end of the fifth round of the game, and at that point we will score points for all of these things. The first thing we will get is points that we gathered as we were playing through the game. The next thing we get is points that are listed on our artifact cards. After that, we will get any points on the conditional icons on our artifact cards, and then we will get 8, 5, or 2 points, depending on if we are 1st, 2nd, or 3rd on this military track. And we can see that is printed right up here, and it is worth noting that the dummy players can occupy one of those spots, so it is important not to lag too far behind them if you want to get points for the military. Next up, you will get 8, 5, or 3 points for finishing the caravan, and you can see that is printed right down here. So this is effectively a race. The first player to get right down here is going to put their caravan onto this 8-point spot. The second caravan will go to the 5-point spot, and any future subsequent caravans go to the 3-point spot. Now, it is possible for one player to go to the 8 and the 5, and considering we are really good at moving down the caravan, I think we better make use of that as we're playing the rest of the game. Obviously, our opponents are making very good use of their characters. The green player is way up here with another one of their explorers already, and obviously the blue player is just going to expand their military lead. All right, let's now come back over here, and the next thing we will score up is all of the flags on the outposts that are face up on the board, and then everyone will lose five points if they have any reserved artifacts that they did not create. Lastly, players will get half a point for their raw resources and one point for their refined resources, and once they add up all of those points, the person with the most points will be the winner. Well, at this point, I've now taught you most of the rules to the game, so this is going to bring the tutorial to a close. If you'd like to watch the rest of the playthrough as we go through rounds 2 through 5, you can do so by clicking the link down below in the description or the eye up there in the top corner, and I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Terramara. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.